Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast, the podcast designed to challenge you to break the mold that average has on the world. Each episode offers insights directly from those who choose to break average every day. Now for the latest insights, here are your hosts, Paul Gustafson and Barry Smith. Hey guys, this is Paul Gustafson. Welcome to the Breaking Average Podcast. So excited that you are here watching or listening on whatever platform that you're on. Thank you. Thank you for dialing in and joining. We wanted to provide to you an encore dialogue that we had with uh, John Mosley, Coach Mosley. If you haven't seen it, I want you to go to Netflix and check it out. Last Chance You. It's a great show. And it's uh, Coach Mosley is the coach for East LA Community College out there in California. Fantastic. Um, I just love his leadership style. And uh, stay with it. Stream it. Binge it if you can. Watch season one. Season two just came out before Christmas. So uh, two great seasons to kind of enjoy and watch. And you'll see how one man, and really his staff, how one man and his staff really pour into the lives of young men. Young men and women who are struggling. They've gone through some challenges. They're in juco which is junior college for a reason they're not the elite now they're elite performers they're great athletes but they've had some challenges just like the rest of us and um, watch that show but also listen to this podcast here as we have a dialogue and this is kind of a best of we had a two-part if you can go back you can watch the whole length of everything that we had as far as our conversation with coach mosley it was great but what i've done here is kind of compacted giving you two parts of it so enjoy this, enjoy this podcast, love to hear your feedback, and uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Catch us out next week. We've got a great encore presentation or, or dialogue that we want to share with you as well. Love to hear your your thoughts and takeaways. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. He is the one and only Coach Mosley. Coach, great to see you. How are you doing today? Paul, doing well. Uh, excited to be on, man. I'm honored you guys uh, reached out to me. Conversation um, because... You know, you are a lid lifter coach, um, just the way that you conduct yourself day in and day out, your passion that you have. It's not just for the game. It's for, for these young men. And, mm-hmm. but let's dive into that. Let's ask, let's kind of explore that. What compels you coach Mosley to be the leader that you are? You know what? I, there's so many people that's lifted, lifted me up and kind of supported me. Uh, and yeah, you do have to kind of gravitate towards those people. You got to trust them. Uh, but the main one is, you know, it's, it's my faith. It's my relationship with Christ. I, I think he had compassion for me. And, and if you knew the, the person I was, and yeah, I wasn't robbing people. I wasn't a criminal, but if you knew what, where my heart was, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, and a lot of us are walking around here with it's going on in our, our country right now, our hearts aren't right. And we, we can be great on the outside, but our heart isn't right. And I think, uh, my heart wasn't right and I wasn't living right and, and I shouldn't be where I am today, but he had compassion on me. And so it compels me to have compassion on, on kind of others. Uh, there was a level of conviction that I have now, a level of conviction that I have now, yeah. uh, you know, for others and that I didn't have before. It was all about myself. And I think, you know, it, it's kind of something that, when you you, you kind of get humble when you, you draw neat you draw that close to God you get humble yeah. like okay I'm really nobody and my purpose should be to go out there and help others so that's kind of similar to where I'm at uh, now yeah yeah and I, and I love that story because coach we've all fallen right we've all tripped up there's our points in, in our lives where we're like well gosh who am I who am I to make that kind of impact and uh, you, you're sharing really a story of um, redemption you know, for you and, and really for these young, young men that you, you're, you're grooming, you know, day in and day out and the, the effort and energy that you put in and not just your, these young, young men. I, I saw that with your family too. And I think if anybody watched the Netflix show, certainly you have a, a love and a, a passion for your fellow coaches, your teammates, your family and your church too. So, um, coach, I'm, I'm really curious Tell, tell me, because you're a person of faith, and uh, and a lot of folks that were listening to this podcast are too. What is, what is a verse that you that's kind of like your go to verse that really affirms you? Well, I, I like to think that from all the struggles that I have gone through, or even the young men, 
uh, I like to kind of share that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. So that, that we know that, man, for, I try to share with these guys, we, we really talk about changing your response to the adversity and things that you're going to go through. So mm. there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. For every high, there is a low. There's always going to be highs and lows. So how can we change our response? And what helps us get through knowing that we're going to have these highs, knowing that we're going to have these lows, uh, realizing that everything's going to work out to the good of those who love the Lord. So God has a purpose for those, those, uh, you know, disasters in our lives. I mean, at the end of the year, uh, if you watch the show, uh, there's a purpose to all that. There's a purpose to what's going on right now. That's going to direct us towards, uh, towards God. And, and ultimately, I love that one because I, I, it reminds me every day, um, you know, yeah, it feels good. It's hard to be reminded or to point towards God when everything's going well. But then when things go down, all of a sudden we're looking around, okay, God, where are you at? Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm always reminded that everything is going to work out for his good, good purpose, for his glory. That's, it, it doesn't matter how it looks, it's going to work out that way. Uh, and I love that. I love that message. You know, certainly that was a tough scene where we're all watching, wondering, are they going to play the next game? Are they going to be driving up north? And uh, you get that call right outside, you know, your office there. And then you have to go on that bus and, and tell the guys, hey, we're not heading up. We're not going up. That must have been heartbreaking for you, right? Well, the, the biggest thing is I felt like I let the guys down because – you know, I, I kind of told them throughout the year, like the whole year is building up, trying to sell them and try to build this dream up and grabbing them and pulling them with this carrot. Like, come on, let's go, guys, follow me. Let's go. We can do it. And, you know, all the things that Deshaun and Joe. Now, it was just those four guys, mm -hmm. like four or five guys that they highlighted. But 15 guys are going through this. Yeah. 15 guys have issues. 15 guys have five problems. And you multiply five times 15 all those yeah. issues and problems that I'm kind of digesting and kind of going through navigating myself, coach Hunter, coach uh, Robinson. We were all trying to help these guys navigate academics, all these issues. I mean, Joe and Deshaun are dealing with legal. Deshaun loses his mom. He's working on his mom's estate and I'm dealing with lawyers with him. Joe's got lawyers because he's got legal issues and we all get through it and they hold it all together. But then I felt like I let him down, even though it wasn't my fault. Yeah. So that was first. And I was like, okay, how am I going to help them? The first thing that came to my mind was how am I going to get them through this? Something that I cannot control. The first thing I thought about, because the, the carrot that we dangle is, hey, we're going to get you guys here at this community college. And then we're going to move you out. We're going to get you guys moved on and get that college scholarship. We want you to be at a better place than when you came in. And so here I am thinking, how am I gonna do it? Yeah. How, how am I gonna help these guys to get out? There's this pandemic. Mm. How am I yeah. gonna sell these players? We were supposed to go and play in front of 300 or so college four-year coaches. And that was gonna, that wasn't gonna even guarantee anything, yeah. but it was gonna give us a better opportunity. And so I'm thinking like, how is this? Yeah. And that was the first thing that came to mind. And I was so disappointed for them. I was so hurt. Like I let them down and they're looking at, they like literally when they were in the locker room, they were literally not down kind of because yeah. they were thinking like, okay, what is, how's coach Mosley going to get us out of this one? And I was just like, I have nothing. I don't have anything for you, but there's going to be more painful moments. This is a painful moment again. Like you guys went through some painful moments when you were 10, 11, 12, you went through painful moments a year ago before you got to me. Guess what, guys? This is another painful moment. And we're going to have to come out of this. And so that was what was heartbreaking. I was hoping we got to see, we got a chance to win and they got a chance to feel that sense of accomplishment before they went back to a painful moment. Because, you know, we're going to, I mean, next year, Paul, you're going to feel some pain next year, right? You may feel pain Tomorrow, we're going to feel pain. But I was hoping they got a chance to feel that success and that, that win and to be on top before that pain came again. But unfortunately, that pain came again. 
and it, it came at that moment and I, 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 felt, I felt like I let him down. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would say, even though that was a tough moment and really a tough moment for everybody, you did not let them down, coach. You did not let them down. You chose to align yourself, al align to some values. And what we saw as a, as a, as a viewer of that show, and and realizing that this is reality i mean this is not just a scripted tv show this really happened um just the way that i saw that alignment like these guys they're they're together you know we're, we're all in the same foxhole we're all fighting that same fight these guys were we're going to stay together one way or the other i'm curious how they're doing now and i love the little after piece where they they highlight you guys highlighted some of the the things that they're doing now but yeah. you didn't let them down coach you, well, you encouraged they, them you, you lifted them up and well we felt it that they did it so in that moment i did feel like that they were ready to move on so i told them that they won and i know that sounds corny right you guys yeah. are winners in my book right that's what every yeah. coach says at the end but i i really felt like that they culminated they did win because they they, they did understand i just wanted them to enjoy the fruits of their labor. And, and they are right now. They've all moved on. They're all in colleges. I wanted to enjoy it to enjoy it a little bit longer and get the win and and have that in their back pocket that they can always go back to and say, hey, I accomplished this. But they did culminate. They did win. They were on track to graduate and they all graduated. They all moved on and got to schools and colleges. So I, at that moment I felt like they they figured it out, but I just yeah. wanted them to experience, get that extra icing on the cake. Uh, and so I did say that that was a special group. They're going to always be bonded. You know, they're going to say, hey, I need you in my wedding, you know, or all yeah. those different type of things. That's that type of group. And I've never had a group that way. So yeah. uh, I've never had it. And, and I've been around teams, but that was a team that really liked each other. They really, they weren't, it didn't feel like they were going to lose because of a selfish intention. Normally you, you'll lose a game because of a, it could be just one selfish intention in the game and mm -hmm. it was no selfish intentions. So I was, I was excited about that, you know? Uh -huh. uh, and I thought that that was what was carrying us. And that's what I love being around. And sometimes I, I used to have to create adversity because they were doing so well together. You know, I just, I just make up something to get upset about, you know, so that they can make them work or make them run for some weird reason, you know? Or make them think. What about that one moment where you give them the eight minute kind of silent treatment? That was classic, Coach. Yeah. What was, going, what was going through your mind during that little segment right there? Well, you you know, as a believer, the first thing that happened is I prayed, right? So yes. I'm praying, like, okay, these guys, this moment, what do I do now? I'm I'm questioning. I'm asking myself, okay, what do I want to do? Because immediately when I say everybody on the line, okay, so I probably re number one, I probably reacted too soon. Because when I look back, I didn't really want to run them at that moment because I'm like, ah, we got a game in the next day or something. It was something that was the, the reason why I didn't want to run them. So yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I got these guys on the line. I really don't want to run them. And I said, well, maybe I'll just do a quick little run. But I'm praying like, Lord, what do I do? But at the same time, I'm hearing whispers like, oh, I know he's going to run us. And so I kind of want to kind of switch it up on him a little bit. Like, OK, they think I'm going to run them. Well, I got to figure out something to do. So I'm kind of walking and I'm thinking. But then as I start to walk, it actually gives everybody a time to reflect. Yes. You know, and I think that's really the biggest lesson that came out of that. And that, like you said, it was unscripted. It wasn't any, I may have done that one other time in, in you know, in nine years that I've been a head coach, but it was unscripted. And it was just that moment that just needed, we just needed to stop. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. It was great. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to step away from it, think through it, allow them to allow the team to kind of think through it. And uh, it, it was a powerful moment. So, and, um, you know, there's a lot of great moments in, in, in the show. But let me ask you a question, Coach. What does breaking average mean to you? Why is that important? Well, I, I think it's, especially in our culture, in our society, man, um, you know, I, I love the, I love the uh, not being, uh, just don't, I love one of the quotes, just the, the, a quote that I, I would use a lot is don't be ordinary, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it, so many times we, you know, we 
we just stick to status quo. And even in myself, I think even with this pandemic, I, I, I'm having a tough time. The tough time I'm having is they're telling us to just sit tight, do Zooms, and do the best you can. And I'm, I'm really having a tough time with that because yeah. this is not how my DNA, this is not how I operate. We're kind of looking for just a little bit more. And don't be ordinary is kind of where, you know, uh, breaking that, 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 that average, breaking that norm. I think how we've done such a great job in our society and in our culture and all the great things we've done in America or if anybody has done, it's, it's been out of breaking out of that average space and getting into something extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Being miraculous. Um, you know, uh, and, and that's, with all of the great CEOs, with all of the great leaders, with all the great athletes, with all of the great people and ministers or anybody who's done anything on a grand scale. And I'm not talking about getting grand recognition because sometimes that can be false. Yeah. But uh, in myself, you know, I, yeah, everyone puts us on this uh, platform because we were on Netflix. But what we were doing every year, I, I said, Lord, I don't know how we're going to exceed the expectations we did last year and somehow we would do it but it comes from a, a place of 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 waking up with passion and purpose uh every day to do something better than what you did the, the, the next day and that's what uh you know that's what we've done and and yeah. it was no different and we saw it in the show and i was surprised that that we even looked the part i was surprised that we even looked like we were doing something special and everybody's kind of celebrating like hey you guys you guys are really moving forward. Well, that's what we're doing every day. And, you know, we can't even celebrate those wins. I think we talk about for every high, there is a low. I'm not going to celebrate anything high because that can just go away tomorrow. We got to mm -hmm. keep pursuing past that celebration. Uh, and I even tell our guys, I'm not going to celebrate you until you leave, until you get that college degree, yeah. until I see you play. I don't even celebrate guys until – Till they leave, they don't even know I'm celebrating them. Uh, I'll, I'll celebrate a guy. I'll say, hey, did you see so-and-so play on ESPN? When he was here, he worked hard. He did this, this, and this and got there. So I think I, I even told the guys in one of the episodes, I was gardening one-on-one. -on -one, and I forgot I even said it. And somebody had made a meme out of it and a quote out of it. And I just said it out of the blue. But the guy, he kind of crossed me over and he made a good move and he shot it and he almost made it, right? Yeah. And all the players in the gym said, oh, and they screamed like he almost made it. I said, why are you guys celebrating almost? Why are we <laughs> celebrating almost? And so that was a, a moment uh, that I kind of take in myself. I, it irritates me to celebrate almost. I go to a high school game and uh, the high school kids are warming up and they do these windmills and they almost make a dunk. And I'm like, why are we celebrating that? You know, we're celebrating almost. We need to be celebrating completion. We need to celebrate yeah. uh, excellence, not almost. Oh, he almost did it. And so, that, yeah. That is so good. I, I, it's important for us to remember that, right? Because, you know, we, we it's not Little League soccer. Everybody gets a trophy. Exactly. Right. That bothers me. I'm, I don't want to get all that. That bothers me. There is a space where my kids, because I have kids that are in athletics, yeah. they needed to learn how to come together and work together. And mm -hmm. there is a space for that. But then there's a time where they have to learn that there's a separation, that there's somebody that you're going to be competing against for the rest of your life. Even if it's yourself, you're going to be competing for the rest of your life. And you, you can soften the word com competition up or however you want, but it's competing for the rest of your life. And, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. I know our society is trying to change it up, but, uh, and there is a level of toxic that comes into play. So let's fix that. Let's yeah. not take away competition. Let's just fix the yeah. toxic. Don't say that it's wrong to compete. We, we do have a little level of, of, of toxic that comes into play. So I, I, agree. I, I would love to clear that up in our society and, and what, however we want to say it, because we're trying to soften, you know, in terms of how we run our business, in terms of pursuing excellence, in terms of competition, in terms of, of, of masculinity, in terms of all that. 
why we don't need to take it away. We need to take away what's with the wrong that's in it. There's nothing wrong with me being strong. There's wrong with me. There's what's wrong is if I'm strong and I'm using it to hurt people. That's yeah. what's wrong. That's what needs to get fixed. If I, if I don't take away the fact that I'm strong, there's nothing wrong with that. So I think, and that's the same with, with competition. Don't take away competition. But if competition is, 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 is harming people and if, if, if it take away the wrong that's in it. So. Yeah. And there's actually a joy in the competition, right? I mean, yes. part of the reason why we watch a show like that on Netflix and, you know, or watch the year prior, the last, last dance with the Michael Jordan, because we want to see that competition. There is a striving to get better. Yes. You know? Best is an illusion, but better is something that we can always achieve and try to pursue and go after. And that was an example that was exemplified for me, at least, in watching uh, the Last Chance You what, what you were doing. Like, guys, we we can get better. Like, yeah. you think you're all there? We scored all these points against that other team. Yeah. But was that your best? Yeah. We can get yeah. better. Yeah. So I love Absolutely. I love that message that that you have there. And and uh, and like you just said, nothing wrong with being strong. We can be strong and kind at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's you know, don't say don't be strong and that'll make me kind. Like, no, I can do both. You know. Yeah. Dude, that's right. So tell me, coach, what's a challenge, maybe a fear or a doubt that, that you've had to personally overcome in, in this journey, in this leadership journey? You know what? Uh, it's, it's not knowing it's the unknown. So, uh, you know, I just don't know every day if those guys are going to show up, you know, mm. I don't know what's going to, I, the, the uncontrollable is what I fear. Uh, you know, the things that I can control, I'll take responsibility for, but it's the uncontrollable is kind of what I fear. I can't control if Joe Hampton's, what's going to happen between him walking out the front door and him walking into my gym. Once he gets into my gym, I have a little more, more control. And so I just worry if he, is he going to, the responses that he has in the gym with me, is he going to have the, the, the wrong response in between getting from point A to point B where I can get control and I can start to work on him and chip away and, and I can take, you know, I can help him. So that, that's what really is what, what I fear when dealing with young men or when, when I'm trying to help people It's like, man, when they go home at night, what are they dealing with that works against what we're trying to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that, that's the, the toughest part. And can we build up enough, that it can combat whatever that they're dealing with at home, or can we build up enough and, and develop enough that they can start fighting that stuff off, you know, and which they did at the end of the year, they built up enough resistance to now they can go out and kind of do it on their own. And uh, because they're not walking through the door, uh, they're not walking through the door with that. And so I'm just surviving. Can we survive? The fear is that I'll lose them before I win, win them over, you know, yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to win. We're trying to win. And before they can, they can fall off the deep end. Did I, did we put in, did we plant enough seeds, you know, yeah. before we lose them? And that's the fear, you know, uh, is the unknown and where they're at and what, where they're going. You know, I, I kind of take on the responsibility once I commit to you and once they're committed, uh, now the, I take on the whole burden. It's like, nah, I committed to you. And it's even a challenge to me. I don't know if that's wrong. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's, if it's wrong for me to say, okay, it's a challenge. Cause now it's, it becomes about me to make sure that you're okay. Uh, you know, it's like, that's a challenge. Like I'm not letting this guy fail. You know, I yeah. want to see him successful, you know. Coach, and I want to speak into that because there's probably a lot of other coaches um, in sports and maybe coaches in life, life coaches. Um, there's, there's an example here, guys, I want to just call out. I'm going to shine a little light on you, coach, if that's okay. You mm -hmm. say to Joe Hampton, we're not going to give up on you. Mm -hmm. And you repeated that a couple times. I mean, I may not have those exact words, but that was the sentiment of what you were sharing with him. And mm -hmm. you could tell there was a point where he finally gets it. Mm -hmm. Coach is not going to give up on me because he was yeah. looking for you, right? He's looking for, he's got this little soundtrack playing in his head that he's not good enough. He's yeah. not there that this is, you know, I, I don't have what it takes. And you whispered something else to him, you know, in that course of that, that, and you did it for all those players. Yeah. And the challenge really is for all of us 
to take that lead, coach, to follow what you did and do the same, whether as parents to do it with our children, whether we're coaches in Little League soccer or varsity football or whatever it might be, basketball, to, be, to not give up on, on that, that son or that, that young man or that young woman. Don't give up on them. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you and I are persons of faith. God doesn't give up on us either. Good. Yeah. Right. So, well, they were, they were, he'll, he tried to, you know, they'll try to sabotage. And what's interesting is he loved basketball. He wanted to make it in basketball. They all do. Yeah. So why would they sabotage that? It, it has nothing to do with that. There's something else going on that we got to get to the root of. So that's why I can't give up on them until we get to the root of it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, they would have given up on basketball. Otherwise, they would have. But the reason why they're responding poor response is because of whatever baggage that they're coming with. And let's just get through the baggage and let's kind of peel the onion, remove all of the, 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 the rock. Let's chip away at the rock that, that's, that's around that diamond and let's get to the diamond, you know. Yeah. Uh, so like that, that. that's essentially they they try to sabotage themselves and i just laugh i'm like nope i'm not no i'm i'm not letting you you're not sabotage you're not sabotage the only way you're going to you're going to fail here is if you walk out and don't come back but if yeah. you come back in the door you got to deal with the expectations and i'm going to help you deal with the expectations yeah i love that that's good that's good so coach you know you've certainly been in the game a long time you certainly have heard a lot of great advice, but what's the greatest piece of advice maybe that you've ever received that's helped you and, you know, in your pursuits as a leader? Well, it came from, here's the thing, man. I, I got a chance to, my, my mentor was great, uh, Bill Oates, and he passed, unfortunately, last uh, Janu January. Bill Oates was with Athletes in, in Action. Mm. And I think it was like the 70s, 60s, 60s, 70s, when they represented the United States in the World Games. Bill Oates was the color, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. During that time, John Wooden was the color commentator. Mm -hmm. So for athletes in action. So they flying on planes all over the world, playing, representing the United States. John Wooden, Bill Oates gets a chance to spend time together all the time. So as I'm coaching at the master's college, I get a chance maybe once or twice a year, right, to, to go see John Wooden because my mentor is going every week to have breakfast with him. Yeah. I'm thinking like, take us, take me, take me. So I get once or twice a week, year. But I remember, and for whatever reason, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody hears this, but when he tells me this, you know, because we look for validation so much. Yeah. But when John Wooden tells you, I said, do you have any advice? What do you say? He said, well, just remember in coaching for every high, there is a low. And he tells me that, you know, mm. and I keep sharing that everywhere I go. I mean, I'll, probably on every podcast I say it because that, that's set deep in me. And so you think about for all of the successes that you're going to have, all of the celebrations, people are going to celebrate you and praise you that, that you don't deserve. Then there's going to be crap that you get that you don't deserve. Yeah. And the same yeah. thing with life, all those different things. And so John wouldn't share with me for every high, there is a low. And he said, you just kind of got to stay right there in, in, in moderation and don't get too high and don't get too low. And that, that you can kind of take that into everything, man. You could, and you start to have success. Don't get too full of yourself. You know, if you, you start to have some failures, don't get too down on yourself. And I think that's what, what he was saying. If things aren't going right, don't read too much into that. Just as if things aren't going wrong with your, if things are going wrong with your team, don't, read too much into it. You just stay the course and repetition is the key to success. You just continue to go and you keep it pushing. Yeah. And you yeah. know what? I found that to be true. I watched my mentor live that out and we would have success. And I'm looking like he should kind of beat his chest a little bit, stick to his horn, but he wouldn't. And then we would have some lows and I'm like, why isn't he more down? Yeah. And we would just keep going and eventually it works itself out. And so, I've learned that in, in life, you know, it's, it's harder to do. Uh, I think the hardest way to do that is with family because your soul family means so much. So I haven't been able to manage that with family. Fortunately, nothing super catastrophic has happened with my children and my wife. So I don't know how I would handle that. If something was down, I wouldn't be able to say, well, let me be positive. If my wife was something was happening to my wife or children, you know, mm -hmm. but in terms of my career, in terms of, of, of 
you know, outside of, of, of my family, I've been able to use that. And I think it, it, it's, it's helped me to stay balanced. Yeah. I love that approach too. And you, you have shared that even before we turn on the recording or tell me a little bit about that for every high, there's a low. And then you you really spoke to something else. I just want to call it out. Um, and I love the John Wooden element to it because John Maxwell, who's essentially my mentor, his mentor is John Wooden. So there's a connection there that we have. Um, yeah. And John, John Maxwell shares this, and I think he got this from Wooden. He says, once you taste significant, success is never enough. Yeah. And what I saw on that bus in that last scene, if, and I'm giving this away, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, I'm going to mm -hmm. give spoil this, right? So you guys are on a win streak. You guys are ready to go take that next W. You got everybody on the bus, coach. Everybody on the bus. And if you've, if you've ever read Jim Collins' book, Good to Great, he talks about the most important thing in that buildup, not just success, but the significance, is to get everybody on the bus. And how mm -hmm. symbolic that was that even though you got that bad news, and you had to go tell everybody on that bus. Guess what? Everybody was on that bus. Everybody was on the bus. That's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was, You and you're right. Uh, in the last scene, I think we talked about, and that's what symbolized when we went in the locker room and I said, you guys won. Like you won, you all got on the, you were all there. We, we were there. And I said, if this is the la if this is the end, you know, and I kind of get choked up now because yeah. I, keep thinking about it. I'm like, if this is the end, then, then we won. Uh, and that was the case. And I felt like, uh, they did win. And so that, that, and, and as we move forward, I, I was just a little nervous. I was worried if I'm gonna be able to get these guys scholarships because, yeah. you know, in that moment, what you're able to do is you're on that platform. Coaches see you. That's one element. Number two, after the season, coaches come in the gym yeah. and they revisit and look at the guys. So that was another way. Number three, I can say, hey, coach, I'm going to send this player to your campus. All that was eliminated. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now we're, you know, the coaches are relying on just my word in a video if they want to take this young man as a scholarship. And then it was, it was also tough for me to tell the kids, like, hey, you have to take this because you're not going to get a, you're not going to be able to go on a camp. So it was two way. Yeah. The, the, the kids had to trust. They're, they're doing a Zoom with a college coach. They can't see a campus, and they got to sign a scholarship. Mm. And at the same time, the coach has to say, hey, here's a scholarship on Zoom. And so that was, that was, that was the most difficult. I was on uncharted territory, something I hadn't, hadn't had to do. Yeah. Uh, and normally, coaches can come in and spend time with players even after the season. We missed all of that, and I just didn't know. But, but I did feel like that they were in a good, good space, even though that we weren't going to – championship but now there's this new platform all these coaches get to say oh wow look at this right mm -hmm. you know, look at look at kj you know look at john uh, look at joe look at all these guys Deshaun, look at all these players and yep. um you know that's that, that is significant you know and they're always those guys those players are always going to go back and they're going to remember that they're going to remember coach mosley this is going to be a highlight for them even though COVID happened because we were all in that same boat COVID yeah. happened to all of us, not just yeah. your players, but it happened to all of us. And it was a tough time, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so coach, uh, you're clearly, you're, you're getting into this, really the next question I wanted to share is what kind of impact do you want to make? And, and you're, you're really highlighting that. Can you kind of spell that a little bit more? What's that impact that you're, you're, you really, you have a vision for? Well, you know what? I, I think it's kind of, it, 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 it'll always go back to, I, you know what? I don't even know. I, I, I just act. But then if you want me to write it down and put bullet points yeah. on what it is, I think it's servant leadership. I think it's just serving yeah. and trying to help others get reach their goals. You know, uh, you know, I've had to come up with these bullet points in my head because I, I try to just live it out. You know, uh, I like to be authentic with it, with the serving. I, you know, I don't I, I don't want to I take all of these great uh, books that I read and all these different things that I read and and really, I think those things are to help me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But for me to to help others, I, I, I okay, let me pour into myself. Let me make sure that I'm ready. I'm strong, and to help others. But how I help others, I think is authentic, are organic. Yeah. How I help others, I think is organic. You know, how I help myself. Yeah, I got. I need to read John Maxwell. I need to read 
you know, these different books. I need to go yeah. to the Bible and I need to absorb God's word. But how I help others is kind of organic with, with the compassion that I have for others because Christ had that compassion for me. I see other people, I see myself in those guys. Yeah. And I see that if someone didn't, mm. that was practical, didn't speak to me, because I, you know, I grew up in LA, I'm kind of like, you know, I felt like I had swag. So if anybody didn't come with any swag or any, anything that I can feel, then I was not really listening to you if I couldn't feel you. So I wanna make sure that the, the people that I come in contact with, or the players at least, you know, we come from the same place. So they can feel me a little bit more. And so I want them to feel me. And, and I wanna make sure that I do everything I can so that they can feel me so that I can help them. Because I was, I was them at one time. And I don't want them to miss out. I wanna get their attention, you know? I don't wanna just tell them what to do. I wanna really get their attention and, and so that they're really convicted about what we're saying about how to change their lives and how, you know, about what they need to do to move forward, about getting their education, uh, creating these great um, habits to move on and be great in life, you know, creating this resilient to respond to adversity, mm. what, you know, is what I want them to learn. And, and, and they're not going to hear me if they don't feel me, if there's no connection. And so, you know, uh, just that servant leadership, I think that that's kind of where my heart is and kind of serve. And I found that in these last couple of years, you know, I was running around being a coach, you know, a division one coach. And, and I found that I've been at my best and I've been having the most success right here because I'm able to really just care and not worry about I'm at the NCAA level and I have to win in order to keep food on my table, you know, <laughs> Here, yeah, you, you want to win, but really, I can really focus in on the, the heart of those young men. Yeah. And then guess what? If they are really hurting and they really come into office and I see those eyes, now I can minister. Now I can, I can share the gospel. You know, I don't shove it down their throat, but I can share the gospel. So I really have, I have something real that I can offer them. Yeah, I can give them all these, hey, let's respond to adversity. Let's get stronger in the weight room. Let's do this. Let's work harder. But guess what? If they really are hurting, that's when I can share the gospel. So I have the ultimate, the ultimate that I can share with them. You know, I can give them all, a, I can give them a, even a John Maxwell book, you know, that, that, that's going to highlight the, uh, what, 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 what the word of God says, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's similar to a John Maxwell where, you know, you can bring them in and because they love, they love the, they love what's coming out. They love, but then all of, but if you read long enough, if you read deep into it, you're going to see that the gospel is coming out. Yes. That's so good. That's good. I love that whole servant leadership element to it because certainly you reflected that coach, coach Robinson, um, uh, did as well. And I'm trying to remember the uh, coach Hunter. Uh, yeah. Coach, all three of you guys were reflected that the servant leadership aspect to it. Um, I wrote the word empathy down, um, mm -hmm. as you were just sharing just a moment ago, because I think that's how you, you did connect and that's how you do connect, you know, day in and day out is that empathy. I remember the line at the very beginning that says, Hey, uh, once a Husky, always a Husky. Cause you played for that school. And yeah. so that was the empathetic moment there for them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then you created an invitation for every one of these kids to step forward like, hey, look, you know, we, we, could, pl we could play in the comfort zone or we can step out of our comfort zone and here, let's, let's, we, we got to do something here that's going to break the ordinary, as he said earlier. Yeah. So that was really powerful. Yeah, we got to get, get out of that ordinary. Cool. So what's one word that you would use to describe, you know, your whole focus right now? Is there one word that kind of catches your attention? Um, I think. I think uh, relationships, man. Oh, yeah. It's just relationships. None of this works. None of this works without having the relationship. You got to understand what is really going on. Yes. You got to understand what is really going on. If I didn't know what was going on in Deshaun's life, I would not have tolerated him or Joe or any of these guys. Mm -hmm. And so I think the relationship piece is, is important. Uh, if you could say one thing that works, it's the relationship. 
I don't even know if I'm a, a good coach, man. I just know that I know enough about the guys yeah. that yeah. I'm working with that I can steer them in one direction. And hey, it's better to all go together in kind of a direction that's kind of not straight than for us, for 15 guys to be going in 50 different directions, you know? So if we're all going in the same direction and it's kind of off, that's better than going in 15 different directions, you know? So they, they all have come together. And I think it's because of the relationship. I'm telling you, man, I mean, the guy that you probably never, you probably don't even know his name, Micah McLaurin, like never played. Like the guy just sat in the vans when we drive, like we had to drive the 12 passenger vans, right? Yeah, we didn't yeah, get yeah. the team bus except for the state championship game. So we're driving the vans. Michael McKinney just – Michael McLaurin, I'm sorry, sits next to me every time. That was his spot. And we just talked about stuff. And that was our time. You know, yeah. everybody I had time with everyone. Uh, and it was just relationships. I and you have that. to. You have to. You have to. Otherwise, you, you're going to lose them. Any leadership, you got to have relationships with, with those guys. And I love to see the stories when – when the CEOs are in the trenches, uh, when the CEOs are up top looking down, you know, that's, that's when, uh, you know, that, that's when you get resentment from your employee employees, you know, yeah. there's resentment. And, but when there's a relationship, even for pastors that have large churches, when you can sometimes get down to the, 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 the core of the congregation and, and you could uh, let them know that I know who you are, you know, that's it. And now, now there's where the support, now there's where the buy-in is, you know? I love that. I think there was a, a line in, in the Netflix show. I think you quoted McDowell, Josh McDowell rules without relationship leads to rebellion. Yeah, that, absolutely. That relationship. That, I'm glad you mentioned that. I actually wrote on here as we were going through this interview, this discussion, what would the, what would the players say about you? And, you know, I haven't had a chance to sit down with them, but I know this just based on what I saw. Coach loves me. Coach loves me. And they started with that maybe perhaps as a question. Does coach love me? Does he really love me? And by the end of that, when they're on the bus, even despite COVID, the answer is yes, coach loves me. When you're at that, on that camping trip, yeah. when they were coming down that hill, that was a spiritual walk for them. Something transpired in each of them. You could tell. And I wanted to be there. Like, there's more to this. And you said, even before we turn on the record, there was more to that than, than you saw on the show. Yeah. But um, it, it, relationships. And I, I think that's just a solid way to, to kind of wrap this up. And, Coach, I think I appreciate your time. Any, any final words that you want to echo and share out? Maybe some encouragement for, for other folks that are trying to lead? Um, the reminder yeah, I, of this. Yeah. I, I would just focus on that. And when you really get to know them, like you said, then the empathy hits and then you, you, you live out the burdens with them and they'll, they'll follow your lead after you live out those burdens. When I lived out the burden with Deshaun, not just let me hug him because his mom passed away, but the real burden was because he had everybody to hug him. Right. Yeah. When his mom passed away, but the real burden was the all of the business and financial that he had to go through, that he had no direction because everybody was trying to get at him and claw at him. But what I hugged him and surrounded him. I said I pulled him from all those that were trying to, you know, that were trying to get at him and trying to get whatever his mom left. And I said we're going to protect this. This is yours. This is what your mom left you. Nobody, no family member or anybody. Let me show you how to protect that. Wow. And so from there, that trust is never, he, to this day, he keeps calling me, Coach Mosley, hey, I got this real estate thing we should do. And I'm like, Deshaun, man, just finish college, man. Yeah. You know, so there's a trust there forever. And I'll never, you know, he'll trust me because, and it's similar to, to, to you know, with my wife and, you know, how we interacted before we were married. She trusts me uh, yeah. because yeah. of, uh, you know, because of the relationship and we lived out the burden of pre-marriage and not doing anything and honoring God before our marriage. Yeah. So my yeah. wife would do anything I'd say because she said, well, if I can trust you with my, with my body before marriage, then I'm pretty sure I can trust you in anything because that's one of the biggest temptations, you know, before yeah. marriage. And so it's that trust. Can you really trust yeah. with that relationship? 
uh, all the way down down to the wire. That's where the empathy, but living out the burdens, man, living out those burdens with with others is where that true trust comes from. And it's so important, <laughs> especially in today's climate. Coach, this is a great way to wrap it up. Thank you for just spending a few minutes with me. I know we went a little bit longer than normal, but I really enjoyed this conversation and uh, praying blessings on you. But thank, thanks for your time. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Paul. All right. All right. Well, hey, thanks, guys, for watching and listening to Coach Mosley. That was an interview we did almost two years ago and uh, thought we'd bring it back, especially in light of uh, season two that just rolled out for Netflix, um, Last Chance University. Great stuff in there, right? Lots of good takeaways. And I love that discussion that he talked about re relationship. When we asked him, what's that one word? What's that one word that you would say really resonates with you in terms of your leadership, your impact, um, what this is all about? He said it was relationships. And I want to encourage you with that word today. Let this year be the year of relationships for you. What's the one little thing that you can do to increase that connection, that, that encouragement, that element of hope that you can give to somebody else? You get an opportunity to speak life into other people. And those relationships really do matter. Maybe it's a relationship that you haven't touched in a long time. And it's just to reach out and say, hey, brother, I'm thinking about you. Just want to let you know that you're on my mind. How are you doing? Just ask somebody how they're doing. Just let them know that you're thinking about them. Boy, that can make a huge impact in their life. It only takes just a few words to make, really to make a lot of things happen. When I say a lot of things, I'm saying that a little bit of encouragement can go a long way. Encouragement really feeds faith. It really allows us to step forward into something that, that we hope for. And when we get courage, to move forward in what we hope for, then we can see change and we're, we can be change agents. So we're all change agents. So guys, thanks again for watching, watching and listening to the breaking average podcast. Um, this is an encore presentation. You can see the full discussion that we had after the interview. If you go back a few seasons, you can see uh, more of the coach Mosley interview. Um, Barry and I will be connecting with you guys soon. And, uh, we're so excited that you're part of, um, part of this tribe, part of the, the listening, listening and viewing audience. Please tell others, tell others about the Breaking Average podcast and check us out on the breakingaverage.com website. Thanks guys. See you next time. Thank you for listening to the Breaking Average podcast. If you loved what you heard, please take a moment to subscribe. This show was produced by R Squared Multimedia. All opinions and comments expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and do not reflect the opinions or views of any of the advertisers, producers, or platforms. As you continue your day, what is one action that you can apply from this podcast to your life? Tune in for our next episode as we continue to challenge everyone to break average. Hey, that was great, John. Thank you. Do you, do you prefer Coach Mosley or John, or go by your first name? Uh, it doesn't matter. Coach Mosley is fine. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Be sure to send me an address so I can kind of send you uh, a few little things there. Um, I'm sure <laughs> I don't want to overburden you with things, but uh, I'll get you no. a, a John John Maxwell book and let's stay connected. You know, I love to hear your story. You know, uh, a year out maybe, and yeah. Um, I, I'll put you on our, our, our prayer list and um, just know that you got support from way over here, 3,000 miles away. Um, and how else can we support you? You know what? Uh, you know what? What we've done is we've created some opportunities where if people want to help with a with a team meal or something. We, we you know, we got links oh, and they're linked in to my, uh, my you know, it, it can either go to our foundation or it could go directly to our team. We got a little small fundraising thing, E-Team sponsor. So that's something that we've kind of put out there. I don't broadcast it a lot because we didn't do this show for people to, to fundraise, but there are some people that say, that's what I, I do. I, I'll share with you, you know, I'll buy a meal or I'll buy a pair yeah, of shoes. Yeah. And uh, because it's been tough with our budget, 
uh, here because it's a community college. It's, we don't have scholarships or anything like that. So, and it's nothing against our district, but that, that's just how it is. It's a community college. And so to make it just a little bit nicer, instead of us staying in a, a two star or three star, we can stay in a four star hotel. We can bump it up a little bit and maybe get a breakfast. Uh, so we have some links and I, I, I can uh, yeah, uh, send share them. with you. Yeah. Send them my way and uh, we'll definitely highlight it. But um, yeah, I appreciate it. I know you got a hard stop, but this has been great. Thank you again for just carving out a little bit of time with me and uh, playing, praying blessings on you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. All right, Thanks. see you.